Good morning, lovely people. Nice to see you. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Jill. So, um, yes, let's see. Okay. So, first of all, um, yes, welcome. Um, what to say? Um, done a little practice this morning based on the question that I read. Um, so I'm kind of uh, ready to share something around that. Um, it, it was a question from Jill around the neck and that sort of thing. Um, and and and, and what, what's been going on? Oh yes, I've just come. <laughs> I've just come back from a lovely, amazing uh, weekend at uh, Santosha. Hi, hi, Kishore. Nice to see you. Uh, we're on um, we're on the neck today. I hope, I hope that's um, appropriate for you. Um, Yes, just came back from an amazing weekend at uh, Santosha. Uh, did the joint clinic on Friday and um, met some um, amazing people. And um, yes, uh, I, lo I love this studio. It's it's, it's up in uh, up in Edinburgh. It's an amazing place. Do go and check it out. Uh, Janice Binney runs it, and there's some lovely people there. Amazing teachers. That's mostly who I work with there. It seems. Um, so. Um, Yes, do come along. The, ne the next one is 8th of December. That's the next uh, Friday Joint Clinic. And then uh, we're, we're um, getting set for the next um, uh, January workshop, which is, uh, uh, I think it's towards the end of January, 20-something. And, and the first one of the series is going to be uh, with me and Pete Blackaby, which is uh, very exciting. Um, He's one of my um, earliest significant teachers. He's one of my first significant teachers that I work with, and uh, and we're we're doing um, a weekend workshop on um, on the fundamental principles of of practice, as in applying um, humanistic and or yoga principles to the physical practice of yoga directly, and. Um, I, you know, uh, it, 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 leads, it leads to it leads to really uh, sort of powerful understanding of what yoga is actually about, and it sort of clarifies the the intent behind the work. It, it's a it's a it's very much a practical weekend. So um, I haven't actually put up any info on their website yet, but uh, it'll be up very soon, and I would suggest booking on that rather rapidly because it'll it'll fill out very quickly. Um, that's in January, towards the end of January. Uh, other, than that, other than that, I've got the joint clinic. Hi, Joe. Nice to see you. Um, uh, I'll be answering your question about the neck a bit later. Um, yes, other than that, um, we've got the joint clinic in Edinburgh on the 8th of December. This, uh, the, the next, um, the beginning of December, sorry. Beginning of December, I've got on the um, 2nd of December, Abigail is running her workshop for teachers and other body workers that are interested in including uh, people, in, including pregnancy, uh, within their within their normal classes. Um, it's when you have a clear understanding of how the yoga works. It's it's, it's very simple. It's, um, the yoga is appropriate for for everyone, including those that um, are uh, are pregnant. But uh, she's running a specific. Um, workshop on the Isle of Wight on Saturday, 2nd of December at Erling's place. He is a wonderful teacher of his own, right? Um, he trained, trained with us and um, is taking the work into to his own new levels um, at the Isle of Yoga. Um, do check him out. Do, do book on for um, Abigail's workshop on the 2nd of December and it'll be great CPD for teachers or body workers. Anyone that's interested in looking after uh, those that turn up pregnant, okay? Uh, and on the Sunday, Sunday the 3rd of December, I'm up in Twickenham with my usual group. Uh, it'll be, um, I think there's a few new faces coming, so it's not, it's not an exclusive group, but it's um, we always go nice and deep. And the workshop's always sort of designed, bespoke to those that arrive. Um, I'm sure there's other stuff, but I, I can't think of what it is at the moment. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so, uh, I'm venturing into the um, online teaching sort of scene. I'll, I'll be, um, I'll be, I think I'm going to be launching a course um, starting in January, 
there's any interest, um, PM me, you know, send me a personal message and um, I'll tell you what my intention is and how it could work. I'll talk about that more another time. So uh, for today, uh, I have a question from Jill. And um, she says, I, I finally caved and started to wear. Oh, hi, Julie. Nice to see you. Uh, we're on next today. So, um, uh, and, and it's sourcing the question from Jill. I finally caved and started to wear uh, very focal glasses and getting, very, getting used to them is creating neck discomfort and headaches from tension. Any help? Deeply appreciated. Well, okay. Yes. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, you've kind of um, you've kind of answered your own question in that um, it's related to the use of the eyes. Um, a lot of people that have head and neck tension, including myself, not um, sometimes. It used to be never ending, and um, has sort of resolved itself depending on how relaxed or stressed I am, but has basically resolved itself over the last, um, I don't know, the last 10 years or so. Um, it's to do with leading movement from the eyes. So, you, you know, you're trying out your very focal, so you're, you're in your eyes, and when, when, you, when you lead movement from the eyes, um, there are some muscles deep in the base of the skull that kind of um, well, they, they organize the head so that the eyes can point and they um, hmm, sort of being sedentary in the body and in your head, essentially, which is what happens when we're sort of using our eyes to look at things, um, will make all movement come from tension around the base of the neck uh, base, uh, base of the skull, uh, the joint between the skull and the neck. And that constriction, that tension, that ongoing tension, will impinge upon some very important cranial nerves. And uh, <clears throat> I notice it in um, people that suffer from, from uh, uh, migraines and that sort of thing. The, 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 there is an ongoing tension, I've noticed, there's an ongoing tension around the sort of control mechanism around the base of the skull. Um, so, <clears throat> so the job is to be able to use your eyes um, without having to control it from the back of the head and neck. It's, it's about um, uh, releasing tension around the skull, essentially. Um, it's not the whole story. If you're if you're getting neck problems, there's there's um, other parts to the relationship. You know, you, you got the you got the head on one end of the spine. Um, you got the rib cage and the breathing at the other end of of the neck. You know, you got the rib cage and breathing at the other end of the neck. The head at one end of the neck, and then you got the shoulders and arms and use of the hands <clears throat> um, between those things, and. <clears throat> Um, all of these things need to become confluently mobile, as in they need to relate to each other in a way that doesn't create conflict around the uh, knee, uh, the um, joint between the skull and the neck, but also, because uh, this is where people feel themselves to have neck problems often, it's around the bump of the base of the neck, which is the sort of junction between the neck and the thoracic spine. Um, Habitually, most people will hang their shoulders off that part of the spine in an attempt to relax. And it's a kind of a function of it's what happens in, um, in sedentary. Uh, uh, you relax <laughs> and you hang your shoulders off your spine. Or um, it, those of you that have um, uh, a kind of lordotic relationship to space, as in you, you um, lift with your lumbers. When you stand, you'll hang your shoulders down your back, which um, creates other tensions around the chest. So um, <clears throat> releasing the neck it involves quite a, quite a lot of changes um, in that it's, um, 
the use of the eyes, the way you use your limbs, your arms, and how you breathe, and and uh, hmm. so what should we do? Let's start. Let's let's begin. Uh, I think the first things first is uh, you, you need instant relief. You need to be able to release the tension across the base of the skull, especially if it's leading to headaches. Okay. So uh, I've got a little trick that helps you disable those muscles, and I'm coming in close so you can see the action. Okay. Oh, uh, Ginger's here, by the way. He's, uh, I, I just mentioned this. Hello, Ginger. Uh, he's, um, he's, moved, mm, he's moved back with my partner, Abigail, in her new, wonderful new place. Um, but he's made a special appearance today. He's, he's found his way back here today. He's only once before. But I think he, he wanted to join in the live, so he's come to say hello. Say hello, Ginge. Say hello to your friends. <laughs> okay, so um, I feel quite blessed to have Ginge back today. Um, what was I doing? Oh, yes, I was going to show you uh, the, the first trick to disable those, um, those tension muscles that we use when we're sort of focusing with our eyes, okay? If you get the one hand and bring it round to the opposite side of your head and stick your middle finger inside your ear, okay? And that makes a good purchase point. Um, you might need to watch before you do this, I don't know, or, tr or try and um, see what I'm doing, but the trouble is if you use your eyes, you'll be tense in the neck. So it's a bit of a difficult one to show. But um, a finger goes inside the ear and that can take the weight of the head to the side. And then your hand, your, your thumb and first finger, needs to be around the the muscles that the superficial muscles that sort of brace when we move our head and it's around the um, joint between the skull and the neck but sort of either side of the center so you need quite a um, quite a, a strong hand and quite a wide span but um, I guess if you can't reach the far side with your thumb just be more interested in in one side the side that you're turning that you uh, you have hold of okay so that that's the arrangement and then I'll show you what to do with it <clears throat> so what you do with it is you take hold of the head from the other side and you sort of relax you sort of relax the arm. Now it's not pulling on your neck. It's not that. Um, it will that will happen, but you have to sort of relax with it, and then uh, that will that will create a kind of I don't know a bit of spaciousness on the side that you're holding on to. And then what happens to sit up? Just watch for a second. If, you, if you're following me, you won't be able to see. Um, what happens then is one, once you've um, and you don't have to be sitting cross-legged to do this. You can do this in a chair or something. Uh, one, once you've got hold of the head and it, and it feels like it's sort of disabled and you can play with it with um, it being moved and your fingers can feel whether you're doing it with your neck or whether you're doing it passively. Okay, you need to do it passively. Uh, excuse me. Uh, okay, so uh, I should put that on. Do not disturb. Uh, let's do that now. Okay. <clears throat> so. Uh, Yes, you have to be able to move your head passively. And then what, what it is, we're going to turn in the direction of the ear that you've got your finger in. So, uh, and what happens is the ribs have to do the work. If you, if you want to, and this is the answer to how to release the skull. You know, if you want to do this and stay soft in the muscles between the neck and the um, skull, which you can feel with your fingers, um, you have to turn with the ribs. And it'll be the lower ribs that are doing the work, and this will be involved in breathing. So the arm is resting out to the side, and the ribs anchor you round into a twist. And what you should feel is a softening in the muscles between the neck and the head on that side. Okay, and uh, the weight of the arm is enough to for you to lean the weight of the head out uh, into. So you rest into the hand and the weight of the arm sort of counters it. So there should be no reason for holding tension around the base of the uh, skull and neck, okay? So if, that, if, that's, um, if that's helped, that, if you've got the idea, let's, let's just do it. Uh, I'm gonna do the other side. So you stick a, f a finger in the ear, I use the middle one, don't have to. It's whatever works, I guess. Uh, I like the middle finger because then that leaves my index finger free to 
route around the muscles of the um, between the skull and the neck on that side. And then um, as I rest the shoulder out from it, then that'll pull me over. But then the ribs on the same side that I'm holding sort of anchor down and away from the head. And that pulls me round. And at some point I, um, I will be righted by the action. And the ribs will be working hard, but the neck should be doing nothing. The weight of the arm resting to the side leaves the shoulder relaxed on, on, on the opposite side. And the, re the head leaning into the support of the hand uh, leaves the neck relaxed on that side. And it's the ribs doing the turning, particularly as you release the breath. And if you can feel the release of the breath through the ribs to the base, then that action is strengthened. And you'll find the turn of the head as, as a sort of passive thing around the neck. Um, the, 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 res, the job of the hand is to basically disi disable the muscles around the, the skull and the uh, neck and throat. Okay. And if you found the turn coming from the ribs, <clears throat> then it should feel a bit looser around the skull and neck. So uh, if you watched the first time I showed you, then you need to do the other side. Strong, strong desire to breathe, breath hold during this. So who's that from? Oh, Feeny. Hi, Feeny. Clearly, I need to do more and more. Um, well, yeah, okay. Hold the breath. But um, you're holding the breath to find space. It's not wrong. Um, I would suggest breathing into the join between the head and the neck. Obviously, you haven't got lungs there, but the the intention to breathe there will get you relating to space rather than pulling the body around. And uh, that's the next clue is how to do this without having the hand there supporting it. You see. So uh, you need to breathe in around the neck and throat. Um, again, obviously there's no lungs, but it's a release of tension that allows the breath to feel like it arrives there. And then when you release the breath, if you trust the weight of the shoulder and lean the head into that support and you release the breath the the release of the breath will gather the ribs away from the this space in the neck um so you might notice that i'm suggesting you breathe into the neck and breathe out through the ribs it, they're, they're two things that can happen at the same time as in they're the two relationships a looseness around the skull and neck and a, a sense of engagement through the ribs, which I'm inviting you to do, particularly with the release of the breath. But it's there anyway because you're twisting. And so the inhale can arrive around the neck and head if you can let go of control. And that's the key because this whole area is about control. You know, when we're focused from the eyes, trying to make something happen, uh, there's tension in the skull. There's also tension in the throat control. Okay, so it's about letting that go and finding support from something more central, which is the, uh, the breath, the heart, um, the lungs, the core support that arrives naturally when we um, let go of control. <laughs> so um, it, that, that should have helped relieve some of the tension now another thing, another thing that's helpful around the skull is is to uh, be aware of how the skull and spine and vertebra of the neck um, articulate. The, the first one, the very first one, is called the atlas, in, and I, I've mentioned this before. And I was doing head stand, so. Um It's it's like a it's an ellipsoid um, cradle, and the skull sort of sits on top of that and can roll around within it. Okay, so the way to uh, the way to allow that, if you if you rest the weight of the shoulders um, by hand, hanging off a wrist or something, and put that on top of your head, and find a position where the neck is neither pulled down or pushing up, neither of those things. You just want the head to sit on the spine, and you'll find again you'll find the the, the, some other part of you. It'll be your ribs working to um, meet the touch as opposed to the head pushing up. If you can find that, then um, the, the weight of the shoulders, the weight of the arms on the head can sort of disable the same muscles. 
So, and uh, the first vertebra, the articulation of the skull with the first vertebra is, is it's like that thing. It's, a, it's an egg rolling around in a cup or a ball in a ellipsoid joint. It's, it's that shape. It's sort of wider than it is deep. So the movement of the skull, it, the head can sort of roll. Um, or you've got to be sure to release the shoulders with this. It's useful to have uh, an image. I, I'm a, I can see myself, so I can see what I'm doing. So you, when you try this at home, you might want to try a mirror. So it's uh, allowing the head to, it's tiny little movements, to move, leaving the, leaving the um, rest of the spine below it alone. And so I, I'm doing the movement, not with, not with neck muscles, I'm doing it with, my, with a little pull on the arms. Okay? And I'm trying to let the head go, very difficult very difficult thing to do. So it's actually easier without the weight, but um, you know, just sort of do the Indian head wobble. Um, the thing that really makes that happen easily is when it's underneath that does the movement. So it's the, it's the spine sort of having a little wriggle underneath with the head left where it is. That loosens up that, that joint. <laughs> And I'm sitting watching myself, and it's quite and it's quite amusing. Um, anyway, so that, that's the that's the sideways movement of the atlas, the atlas and skull um, joint. Um, there's also a little tiny little forwards and back movement. Um, it, it's much less because the the shape of the joint, but it, it's also significant. It's the it's the nodding movement, but it's not tucking your chin in. That that um that thing of tucking your chin in is um, it causes a bit of a strain in the very muscles we're trying to release. Okay, so there's a tiny little nodding action that does the same thing. And uh, then how, how do you do that? Well, you can you can move underneath it to make it passive in the skull. Okay. The the next movement, the next vertebra down, is the axis, which is um, like a, a pin. A, a pin coming up through the atlas, okay, and, and it allows the skull to, and the first vertebra, the skull and the at, atlas, to sort of spin on its axis. And um, again, I, like I'm doing that with neck muscles at the moment, so there's a little side bend action that happens because the muscles pull down as they turn me. But um, I, I can sort of, I don't know, you can turn the body underneath the head leaving the head behind. And that's kind of more useful in some ways because um, the job is to try and relax the muscles around these vertebrae. So if you can turn, work, and you'll find yourself working with the ribs again. Okay? Um, then uh, what happens next? We've got the curve of the neck and the center of the throat. And um, that's, again, that's more determined to, to be relaxed in the neck. It's more determined by the position of the head. So those of us that, um, if you're looking, you'll be tightening those muscles. If you're hanging and trying to go to sleep, you'll be pulling on them. And these muscles will be tense instead if you're doing that actively. So it's, it's, it's none of those things. It's the same, it's the same sort of uh, thing as the um, atlas movement. Instead of that, if you, the, the, the eyes want to be level, not because you lift your neck, but because the head sits in the atlas just so. So it's not so much a lift of the neck, it's more of an openness in the throat that allows the eyes to be upright. And it's not so much a drop of the neck that lowers the eyes, but it's more a softening in the deep upper throat that allows the eyes to lower. So tiny little movements. And the eyes being lowered will create a little more space at the centre of the neck, but not if you're hanging off it, that makes it tense. The eyes being lowered, and, the, the, and, and as that happens, you need a sort of an up feeling deep in the back of the throat, as if, as if looking up through here, okay? And as the eyes raise, it's not a lift of the neck, it's, a, it's an allowance of the head to open up away from the throat. So we don't strain the throat center. The throat center wants to kind of remain reasonably inviolate. It wants to be left alone so it can breathe. And that's a practice all by itself. How, how do I breathe my neck? How do I breathe my throat? 
has to be relaxed. Um, as we move down, there's uh, vertebra four, five, six, seven, and, and when we get to five, six, seven, eight, we're on in the sort of um, the junction between the curve of the neck and the roundness of the thoracic. And like I said, you know, hanging off it is hanging off it with your shoulders, with your head is, is a bit um, counterproductive. It might feel relaxing. And because if you you're if you're used to holding your head up, then letting that go would be a relief. Um, but the idea of stretching that area is a bit um, misdirected. It, it needs to be able to let go, not be stretched. Um, so uh, yeah, so the relationship between everything up here and everything below here very much de deter is determined by how your shoulders are. So if, if you've got your hands in place, have a look, if you're not watching, if you've got your hands touching something, you can use them to sort of bring the wings um, and the shoulder blades off the spine and sort of further back behind the spine so that the spine can start to rest through. Now, if, if you're still watching, I'm, I'm just going to you know, give you an instruction, but don't don't do it yet because you need to see what happens. Uh, I don't know actually what happens because I've never seen myself do it, um, but I do know it relieves this area. Um, I'm resting. I've got my eyes closed and I'm resting my head down, and there's a bit of a pull. Okay. Now, whilst I do that, I can, I'm free to breathe up here, but it is heavy on here. So I'm, I'm free to breathe around the base of the skull, but it's heavy on the bump and base of the neck even though the shoulders are kind of out of the way as opposed to hanging off the area. So what I need to do, and it's a little trick, it's called sh uh, Shambhavi Mudra. It's when it's the direction of the eyes. The eyes are closed, but if I look up, up inside my head as if looking out through the, the crown or <laughs> as if looking out through my man bun, okay, then what happens is there's a, that allows the, invites the head, hello Ginge, it invites the head to to sit a little uh, deeper at the back within the atlas and the intention, excuse me, that people want to see my darling, um, the intention of looking out through the head allows the spine below here to drop through. So there's a feeling of resting open in the throat and as I drop through it's the bump of the base of the neck that softens, I think. I don't know if you can see anything. But there's a feeling of, because I'm looking up inside my head, as if out through my crown, there's a feeling of resting open along the front of the spine. So, uh, I don't know if that was useful. Um, if, it is, if it was, then you can try it. Um, you can try it in something like getting ready for elbow dog. So you can put the... Um, elbows on the ground, the wrists on the ground, knees, get the big toes touching, so the tips of the big toes touching so they're ready without pushing against them. That will help you sort of find some connection to the ground and the inner space. And then as you sort of find a way of sagging through your shoulders, okay, first of all, the head will probably touch the ground. But then if you, uh, with the eyes closed, look up inside your head and and allow the weight to sort of dra travel back over the knees so that the knees go down and the belly moves away from the ground. And as you do that, instead of lifting with the neck, which is what most people do, you can let your, you can sort of present your throat, particularly if the shoulders are not doing any pushing or pulling. If they're just sort of resting over here, resting on the ground, then as you look up through, through your head, as you look up through the top of your head, the bump of the base of the neck can sort of drops through but because of the throat is open and you can get a sense of how the um, head can be a a continuum of the entire spine and it'll be the ribs that do the movement so if you if you want to round out you do it from the ribs if you if you want to extend you do it from the from the bump the upper ribs sort of dropping through as you move back through your hips so you can play with moving through this part of the spine, the, the bump of the base of the neck. So, 
that deals with the um, relationship between the head and the ribs, as well as the uh, spine and the wings and the arms. Um, if you can, if you can find these relationships, uh, if you can find these relationships um, as you use your bifocals, uh, if you can find these relationships as you see, so looking through your bifocals. Uh, stops being uh, pointing with the eyes and starts being receiving information through the eyes from this more sort of centered place. So the head is on the top of the spine. And the head is, the, the turning happens because of the ribs. The, the space between things releases. So the space between your shoulders and and uh, your neck releases to the ground, and that's the ribs, um, so that you can, so that your head is turned from underneath. It's this relationship to uh, the head when the head is the sort of satellite um, receiving information rather than the source of movement. The, this more centered relationship will take out the conflict in the take out the conflict in the neck and the head. Okay. So um, it's quite, quite, uh, quite a deep session there. I don't know how much of it can be got across, but there you go. Done my best. I hope it was useful. Um, so thank you for watching, and uh, I, I will see you next week. Um, same time, same place, 10.30 10 of a Tuesday morning, and hopefully I'll get to work with you directly so at some point, either up in... Edinburgh on the 8th of December, perhaps, or uh, in January, along with Pete Blackaby, or up in Twickenham, or you might make it to one of Abigail's things, um, uh, next one being 2nd December. Okay, so thank you. Um, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Jill. I hope that was, uh, I'm, I'm sure your neck should be feeling better. <laughs> um, I shall sign off and say I am Mark. J. Acroviva of the Acroviva School of Yoga. Um, this has been your Yoga Solutions Live broadcast. I'm signing off now. <laughs> Namaste.